My name is Leslie Dickey and I am the Chief Executive here at the Trust. And this is a little roundup of what's gone on this year and a small look forward to next year as well. As we all know, 2021 has continued to be a challenging year for the whole world as we tackle this global pandemic. But of course, there are reasons for hope. We now have a full vaccination programme here on Jersey, which is now developing around the world as well. And we have a reason to be hopeful for what 2022 is going to bring. Now, of course, we can't do what we do without your support, whether that's as a visitor to the zoo, a member, uh, helping with our events and our fundraising. In whatever way that you help, we need that to do what we do, saving species from extinction. So truly, this is an effort all together as a community. First of all, here at the zoo, we've welcomed some new species. It's always exciting when that happens. For this year, we've welcomed the Titi monkeys that you'll see down in the Tamarind Woods. It's very gorgeous little South American primate, gorgeous red russety uh, bodies. So next time you're at the zoo, have a look in the woods and see if you can spot them because they're out free ranging with the tamarinds. We've also put on display the bush dogs. Now they actually arrived at the zoo in 2020, but now you can see them and they're sharing an exhibit with the Andean bears. They're a gorgeous little South American canid species, little dog species, very busy and active. Um, we're looking forward to hopefully seeing more of them in the future. We've also welcomed some births at the zoo this year. Again, very exciting when we have births. This year it was particularly exciting to see twin Allotron lemurs. Allotron lemurs are very rare in the wilds and we do work with them in Madagascar in the reed bed systems that they, they come from. Uh, the twins uh, that we had early in the year are doing fantastically well. Uh, they're exploring their exhibits and hopefully you're going to be able to see them much more as they grow and develop over the next few months. It's also been a record year for our Livingston's fruit bats. We had 10 pups born in 2021. Really fantastic, um, really important because this is a safety net population for the wild. We have very few of these animals left in the wild. So the safer we can make them by having that backup population, the better. We hope never have to use our backup population to return them to the wild, but the option is there. And that's why zoos remain extremely important when it comes to some of the rarest species on Earth. Now, if we think back to a pre-pandemic time, it does seem a long time ago, but of course in 2019, we had the amazing gorilla trail across the island here in Jersey, much enjoyed by everyone. We raised significant sums for the uh, new gorilla house from the trail. And I'm delighted to say that with other fundraising that's gone on during 2021, we've now reach the total we need to start building the Gorilla House. So that will start happening in the next few weeks and throughout 2022 you will see the new Gorilla House take shape and grow. Uh, we hope to open in 2023 and that will be an amazing new home for our beloved Gorilla family. Now you may recall in 2020 we had to undertake an emergency rescue of some highly threatened Mauritian reptiles. This was due to a catastrophic oil spill on the south coast of Mauritius, threatening some unique habitats and species on the small southern islands. We worked very hard with the Mauritian government and partners and supporters to bring three species here to Jersey Zoo for safeguarding. Now, we've been learning much about them. Some of the species were never held in a captive setting before, so our our teams here have been doing huge amounts of research and really understanding the needs of these animals. But I'm happy to report that we have now successfully bred all three species here at the zoo. We're going to keep a safety net population. We're going to continue to monitor what is happening in the wild in terms of the oil pollution, how it's affecting their wild counterparts and whether we need to do that reintroduction again. But by having this safety net population, it gives us options. And that's what we always need in conservation. There are no silver bullets, so we need to make as many options as possible to ensure a future for some of these incredibly rare animals. Closer to home here in Jersey, you'll all know, of course, about our Red Bill Chuff project up on the cliffs at Sorrel. And this year was somewhat of a landmark year. 
We've had a chick hatched this year from wild hatched parents. That's the first time that's happened. So that's a real step forward in the programme of re-establishing this species on the island. Of course, it'd been missing for over a hundred years when we began the project. Also a bit of a landmark year in that one of our chuffs was seen in France and now seems to have taken up residence there. That's a good sign that they're starting to disperse and starting to move around. Another project that we're very excited to be involved in is the reintroduction of the white stork to the UK. Now, white storks had not been seen in the UK, had not nested there for over 600 years. And over the last few years with our partners at the Nep Estate, we have been reintroducing storks and monitoring them. We're really delighted that this year we did a very big release along with our partners and uh, 27 storks were uh, released onto the Nep estate. It was quite a sight to see them all circling high above the estate, uh, a spectacle that has not been seen for all those hundreds of years. Further afield in Assam and India, our work on the critically endangered pygmy hog has continued. This year, we also undertook a release of 12 hogs into the Manas National Park. It's a really exciting development to be working in the Manas and we hope to re-establish the species there in the not too distant future. 2021 was of course the year of COP26, the Global Climate Conference. I think we all know that uh, we are reaching a pivotal point where we have to solve some of the great problems of the world quickly. And that means climate change, but also biodiversity loss. It was heartening to see at COP26 that nature-based solutions were really something that was talked about seriously, something that's been missing from other COPs. We at Durrell have been thinking about how we combine uh, the crisis of biodiversity with the crisis of climate change. And earlier this year, we launched our program Rewild Carbon. Now, Rewild Carbon is a carbon offset scheme, but it's more than an offset. Offset is too small a word to really describe what this is. This is a project which will reforest corridors in the Atlantic rainforest in Brazil, whilst connecting up patches of habitat to save species like the black lion tamarind, a highly endangered species. It also is working with local communities to provide them with employment, education, and also helping them with agroforestry. So this project will, over the next few years, sequester about 2 million tonnes of carbon. Now, Durrell, of course, has been sequestering carbon for a very long time. We've just not discussed it in these terms. But it's important for us to now bring these two parts of what we do together, our habitat work where we sequester carbon and also our very much better known biodiversity work. Rewild Carbon has got off to a great start and we hope to develop more projects like this around the world to really address these two twin problems of the 21st century. Back in Madagascar, of course, you know that we're working with the rarest duck in the world, the Madagascar potchard. We have released potchards back to the wild from our breeding centres in northern Madagascar. It's been very exciting. Uh, this is a species that not that long ago we actually thought might be extinct in the wild. So we've come a long way to get to this stage where releases are happening. And of course, we've also seen breeding in the wild. We've got ducklings on the lake. Now, we haven't stood still during the pandemic. We've still been breeding in our release centres and we have some exciting news in 2022. So please keep watching our social media channels and other communication channels when we can update you about the next stage in the Potchard programme. So that's just a few of the highlights from across the year. Now, it doesn't tell you everything that we've been doing, of course, and couldn't really fully describe the hard work of all the teams, whether they're here in Jersey or all around the world. And I'm personally very grateful to that hard work. Uh, I've never worked with such a, a thoughtful and committed team of people who are doing their best every single day to meet our mission. But of course, we couldn't do that without your support. So a huge thank you to all of you who support Durrell, who believe in our mission of saving species, who believe in our vision of a wilder, healthier, more colourful world. We can achieve that vision and we can do it with your help. So thank you wherever you are in the world as well for supporting Team Durham.